Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the Alexa Python coding tutorial series. I have done coding tutorials in the past. However, they're a little bit outdated and the videos are a little bit old. I feel like I could probably make them better and I want to make these videos again. So we're going to. Before we get started in this video, which is going to be primarily the installation of Python onto your machine, uh, I just want to quickly talk a little bit about programming as a whole because many people might not even know uh, what coding or programming entails and what Python even is. So your computer does a lot of work behind the scenes. Everything it does is basically ones and zeros firing off in circuitry and wires uh, inside of your machine. But how that occurs is through coding, basically. You tell the machine, hey, do this, 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 and this. The machine then converts that into ones and zeros that the computer can understand or the CPU, and it performs the actions that you want to do. So me coming over here and moving my recycle bin to the middle of my desktop, ones and zeros firing inside of my machine, making this happen. So what we're going to do today is start to look at Python, which is a language for the computer. You can think of this similar to how Spanish is a language and French is a language and English is a language. It's a way that we can communicate, but with the computer. And Python is a imperative language, what they call, uh, which allows us to make functions, which are pretty useful. And we're going to talk about functions here in the next few episodes. But Python is a very, very easy language to learn. And I, I consider it to be probably the easiest language to learn that is actually widely used in the world. It, it's one of the most useful languages that you will learn. It's also known as a scripting language, which scripts are primarily used to do automation type tasks. We might make some automation-y tasks throughout the series, uh, but primarily I'm just going to be showing you some quick little scripts that we can do uh, some fun stuff with Python. So to get started, you're going to need to actually download it. And I've got two pages up here and these will also be in the description down below. So you can just go directly to them. On the Python homepage, you're going to want to go to Downloads and then just download the for Windows right here. If you do not have Windows, obviously, you can also download for Mac and grab the uh, latest release. Or if you're using uh, a VM or something and you want to grab it on Linux, chances are you know how to get it on Linux. You can do a yum install or a uh, apt get, stuff like that, uh, in order to get Python onto your machine. I'm also going to show you PyCharm, which is my favorite IDE to use. An IDE is basically something that you use to do the coding. Python itself comes with an IDE, and that IDE is called Idle. Uh, Idle is pretty bad. It's pretty good to learn Python because it's not very forgiving. Uh, it won't tell you about certain errors. It won't help you autocomplete any code. PyCharm is a little bit nicer with that. It comes with a debugger as well, which I could talk about in a video. Uh, and overall, it's just really useful to have. So I'm going to show you how to set that up as well. So I already have Python on my machine. Throughout the entire series, I'm going to be using Python 3.7, which is kind of the de facto standard out there today. Uh, I'm not going to reinstall it, but I will walk you through how to install it. So you're going to want to possibly do a customized install here. You're going to want to make sure that pip is installed and that idle is installed. And then you're going to want to add Python to the environment variables. This is kind of the most important one because this allows your computer to actually understand what you're doing with Python. So keep everything else standard, hit that install, and that will do a quick install for Python onto your computer. As for PyCharm, when you load this up, I actually completely wiped my PyCharm installation so that you can see how to set this one up. So it should load here momentarily. Beautiful. Let's hit yes. The screen completely disappeared. So we have our setup window. We're going to hit next. We're going to hit next. We're going to create an association with dot pi so that everything kind of just launches in there. We're also going to add the launchers directory to the path. Hit next again, hit install. And this is going to do a quick install of PyCharm onto our machine. I'm going to speed up the video so that you can see this install and then we'll hop into Python itself. Okay, now that PyCharm is installed and a reboot has been done, we can load it up here, which is going to be pretty easy to do. I'll just come over here to PyCharm, load it up, 
And in the process, I'm going to do a nice transition to a newly set up window that I have set up just to get ourselves a little bit of a better view once this loads. Here we go, I had a previous version, so I'm going to import my settings from that just so that everything is as it was, and PyCharm will start to load up. It looks a little bit funky on the video, but it looks totally fine on my side. So here we are, it's uh, loading up PyCharm, and it's looking real good. So, it's currently loading one of my old projects that I had set up because I, had my config set up. I didn't really expect to do that. I'm getting a nice firewall block. Yes, allow it to go through, it'll be okay. And now we're all good. So I have made a project, but I'm going to start from scratch here just to show you how to do everything. You're gonna to wanna to go up to file. You're going to want to create a new project. And this project, I will just put it in my documents and we will call it YouTube. And this will make a new folder in my documents folder or wherever you wanna put it called YouTube or whatever you call it. As for the project interpreter, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you are on the new virtual environment. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your base interpreter is Python 3.7. It should do this all by default, but you might have to uh, set it to be that if it is not there. And then we can just hit create, and this will create a new project. I would like it to be in this window. Malwarebytes is trying to update. Every time it does something, it pushes me out, that's okay. And it's making a new virtual environment for us, which we will be able to do our coding in. Beautiful. Here we are. So right now, we, we got nothing. We don't have a file. We don't have anything. That's okay. We have a nice little project directory over here, which you can see right here. We have our scripts. These are a bunch of different things that we can use inside of Python. Uh, we have our library, which has some packages. We have an include. We have a config. But what we want to do... We just wanna make this simple on ourselves. We're, we're not doing full software development here. You're just gonna to wanna to click on your base directory, right click on it, go to new, and then do a new Python file. And it's gonna ask you to name it. I'm gonna name this episode one or epi one. And this is going to make a nice little place for us to do some coding in. So what do we wanna do now? How do I get started with coding? What even is coding? Well, we're gonna start with a simple print statement. Python has built-in functions into the game that allow you to, <laughs> into the game, into the software, look, it's been a long day, uh, that allows you to do some functionality. So print is a basic function that just allows you to print whatever you put inside of it. So since I have nothing inside of it, it's gonna print nothing. And we can run this uh, a variety of ways. So we can right click and hit run, or we can come up here to this run and hit run. Uh, we can also add a configuration up here and then hit this button, but I think that right click and hitting run is quite a fine way to do it. And uh, you can see with the process finished with the exit code of zero, what does that mean? It means that it exited successfully. If I were to put something wrong in here, such as uh, print ASD, 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 where it believes this is a variable and I were to print this, we're gonna get a big old error. And it's going to say uh, ASD, ASD, ASD is not defined, and we have an exit code of 1, meaning that this was not allowed. Now, you may be wondering, Tyler, how would I print out ASD, ASD, ASD if I wanted to print that as a string? Well, in Python, all variables have to be put in quotes. So, if we wanted a string here, we would have to put this into quotes. Uh, and now that we've done that, we can print ASD, 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 and we have it printed out here on our screen. Pretty nice. We're also going to do, because it wouldn't be a coding video if I didn't do it, uh, we're going to print hello world. It's the very first thing that you'll do. You wanna hit run and it will print out hello world for us. So this is a good time for me to talk a little bit about kind of my expectations for you guys throughout this series now that we have the installation done. I'm planning on doing two episodes a week of Python coding. The first episode is going to be similar to this, where I kind of walk you through how to do something. And then the second episode is going to be me taking the questions that you may have. I want you to put any questions you may have involving the episode into the comments of that video. And then I will try to answer those questions in the next one. And it'll kind of just be a question and answer. I may write some code to demonstrate uh, something if you have a specific question about what happened. Uh, but that may end up being a very fast video. It may end up being a very long video. That's something that we'll just have to figure out as we go. So I expect you to kind of do the coding along with me. It's important to test the code, 
personally because you're going to go in here and you may you know copy print hello world word for word but then if you start to mess with things that's how you learn because maybe you end up you know forgetting one of these quotes okay and then and then you start typing hello world and then you go okay let me run it see what happens and you run it and then you get syntax error eol while scanning string literal and you're going i don't know what to do what is this well, you're just missing a little little quote right there. And then all of a sudden you're back to having hello world print out just beautifully fine. So those are the kind of things that we're going to kind of walk through. I expect you to ask questions in the comments and take time to actually write the code yourself uh, and run it so that you can mess around with it and see it. That's how you're going to learn. So I'm actually, I don't have anything else planned for this video because I kind of wanted to make an intro video shorter but i am going to hop in and do another video right now uh, that is going to be on variables so it should be posted momentarily i'm going to post these at around the exact same time so head over to that one if you have any questions sure but i'm probably just going to answer them in the comments because we didn't do anything in this video thanks so much for watching see you in the next one goodbye <laughs>